Good afternoon and welcome to the DFS Army YouTube channel. I am Razzle 11 and you can find me on X at Razzle 11 Grinds. Going to take a look at some pitching for today, uh, Friday the 24th of May. We have an 11 game main slate this evening. We have two games with some big weather risks in uh, the Baltimore White Sox game and then also St. Louis and the Cubs. Um, which is a little frustrating, obviously, with Baltimore being an offensive team that we want to target, and then the wind blowing out in St. Louis. Big spot for offense, but that is all right. And obviously what that does is it eliminates, potentially, I guess, eliminates our two top pitchers on the slate in Imanaga and Corbin Burns. Just a reminder to everybody that this is a first look at the pitching on the slate. Uh, I will go more in depth for the members over at DFS Army as the day goes on. And I'm looking at DraftKings since that is where a majority of my action is. So like I said, at the top we got Imanaga and Corbin Burns. Um, Imanaga has been absolutely dominant this year in his major league debut season. Um, not much needs to be really said about him at this point. Um, looking at his K-prop, five and a half, juice on the over. He came total of eight. He is a minus 155 favorite. But again, with that weather, uh, as of right now, I am definitely very worried about it. We're looking at a uh, 40% PPD, a uh, 35% PPD risk for this game, with a 70% chance of an in-game delay risk. Uh, that's a pretty big issue for a starting pitcher, uh, so we are going to need to pay attention to the timing of everything as the day goes on. Corbin Burns, uh, I pointed out the fact that his strikeouts just weren't there, and we were wondering about the Seattle matchup the last time out. Basically stating if he didn't turn his strikeouts around against that team, there might be an issue. Uh, well, he did turn his strikeouts around. So uh, in this game, it is a 40% PPD risk with an 80% chance of an in-game delay, according to our weatherman uh, on site at DFS Army. So uh, obviously a lot can change as the day goes on. Burns' K prop is at 6.5, but Juice is on the under. He's a minus 270 road favorite in this one. So, uh, yeah, I mean, if we get some clearing, uh, some discussion about the game should go uh, straight once they get started. Um, or it looks like maybe we go two hours before any weather hits. Then these pitchers are going to be great. Um, but that's depending on a lot, you know, as the day goes on. So hopefully... We get some more updates here over the next few hours to give us a better idea of where we want to go or what we want to do. Next up, Zach Gallon. Home Zach Gallon for me. Big difference. Not a huge fan of Zach Gallon on the road, but I absolutely love him at home. Now he's taking out a Miami squad. Uh, game total seven and a half. He's a minus one eighty five favorite in this game. K prop of five and a half, which is pretty strongly on the over at this point. Uh, Zach Allen, probably going to end up being the, the top pitcher, you know, if we lose, especially if we lose both these guys. I mean, it, it drops off, but Gallon's going to be the most popular at that point. Priced up a little bit, so, you know, all things considered, I think we'd rather take Corbin Burns or Imanaga, but um, Gallon being at home is just such a different animal. He's going to end up one of my favorite plays, no matter what happens with the other games, to be honest. Um, similar return, cheaper price point. Got it like that. Um, generally, I don't really care about uh, going cheaper, but in this instance, if I can get the same return out of that guy uh, as one of the top guys, then why not? Carlos Rodon, uh, steady for the most part. Not showcasing big K numbers like he had, you know, years ago with the White Sox. But he's taking on a San Diego squad that actually has been struggling against left-handed pitching this year. 
It's a team that I would not have expected to struggle against left-handed pitchers, but yet they're out there struggling. Um, some of those guys that I thought were going to be, you know, strong bats against those pitchers, I just really haven't gotten it done. So I am considering Rodon quite a bit. K-prop of five and a half. Juice is on the under, though. Um, he's a minus 115 favorite. Game total of seven and a half. Juice on the under in San Diego as well. He's certainly capable. It's, he generally isn't a, a sexy route to getting it done. Um, as you can see, he's most likely going to allow a home run. But he definitely has the ability to be a GPP winner uh, and put up 25 to 30 fantasy points almost any given night. Cutter Crawford, the guy that I definitely like, he's a minus 135 favorite, but this game has a game total approaching 10. That's at 9.5 now, juice on the over. His K prop in this one, 5.5 juices on the under. I don't mind Cutter Crawford in this spot, to be honest. Uh, he hasn't been phenomenal. You know, the last few, but he hasn't been atrocious. He did struggle against Tampa Bay. Coming off a solid start against St. Louis. Uh, was very solid against Atlanta as well. Was very strong in San Francisco prior to that. Doesn't quite seem to have the same kind of upside, you know, as a Gallon or Rodon might. But I think there is a route to, you know, a mid-20s fantasy point performance. Um... I haven't really looked at the offensive numbers, but I do think Milwaukee has had some struggles of late offensively. I know they did struggle in the series against Miami. Um, being here in Wisconsin, a lot of a lot of Brewer fans were complaining about that performance. So maybe Crawford has the chance to get it done. Game total nine and a half means I'm guessing there's some offensive weather in Fenway tonight. But we'll take a look at that as the day goes on as well. I just think he's going to be very low owned in this price point because he's between Rodon and Verlander, and Verlander's taking on Oakland. Um, coming off of a not so great start, uh, wasn't good against the Yankees, but dominated Detroit. Was strong against Cleveland. Was very good against the Cubs. Um, he's kind of all over the place, but I think he's certainly capable of getting it done. Oakland striking out a lot. They are hitting home runs, but um, they had been struggling, but then they went out and scored a bunch of runs against the Rockies. Different game, so, you know, I don't really expect them to blow up the Houston's pitching staff, but Houston's pitching staff hasn't been great either. K-Prop is 6.5, juice on the under right now. He is a minus 175 favorite, though, so I think Verlander is going to be somewhat popular in this price range. Uh, Probably going to take a step back from playing Kyle Harrison. I've played him quite a bit. Still believe in him as a long-term pitching prospect. Walks are up. Strikeouts aren't really dependent. Um, I'm just probably not going to get there. Bailey Ober has shown some big upside. Um, absolutely dominated a Toronto squad that doesn't really strike out much. Dominated the Dodgers earlier. So he has the upside in this matchup. I just don't think I want to take him against Texas. He's kind of borderline for me right now most likely ends up on the outside looking in just because i think i'm going to play paxton over him which sounds really dangerous um he's eliminated his walk issues i mean they've come down and he hasn't walked anybody in the last couple starts uh his strikeouts aren't up which obviously can be a worry but the cincinnati squad has been struggling quite a bit so i actually think there's some upside in paxton the issue is, I'm guessing, is a high game total. Yeah, game total 10.5 right now. He's a minus 155 favorite. Uh, K-prop of 4.5. Man, there's it's a lot of volatility in this matchup for him, especially if some of the walk issues come back. Big innings can happen. Super dangerous, but I think I'm going to go with Paxton. Uh, right now, I would say he's the last man in my pool with Ober being the last, you know, like the, the last man eliminated, first man out, whatever. Um, Darvish has thrown pretty well. I just don't want to take him against the Yankees, but he hasn't allowed a run in four straight starts. The Yankees are hitting a ton of home runs right now. That's one I'm going to have to dig into more. Um, Darvish has just been throwing the ball so well. 
Uh, Christian Scott is definitely somebody I'm interested in. Um, looked great in his debut. Was pretty solid against Atlanta and then struggled against Miami last time out. A couple extra days of rest for the young guy. Um, looking at his numbers, if I can find... Uh, K prop of five and a half. And he's a minus 142 favorite. Game total of seven and a half. I think I'm going to play Scott against San Francisco. Uh, with the Giants dealing with so many injuries, their outfield um, has gotten to be somewhat right handed. Uh, you know, not as big platoon splits. So I think I'm going to go with Scott and play the upside there. No real interest, you know, in much below here. I, I do consider Christopher Sanchez an option. Uh, he's had some really strong starts this year in Philadelphia. I know it's Coors, but it's still Colorado. Uh, there might be some upside in the matchup. Game total of 11, juice on the under. He is a minus 205 road favorite in that one. K prop of 4.5 with juice on the over. He is a ground ball pitcher. Uh, there's K upside. He did dominate Colorado once this season. Um, obviously, that was at home. So, I'm not sure. Um, his road numbers have been not good, though. Uh, more walks than strikeouts. That's a bit extreme, I guess. So, you're going to have to think as the day goes on. There's some decisions to be made. That's for sure. Uh, my initial thought was Sanchez for sure. Now I'm considering removing him and taking you Darvish. Um, I think both are equally volatile. I think Darvish is obviously pitching better. Um, trends kind of sit in his favor a little bit more than Sanchez, so maybe that's the route we have to go. But uh, nobody down here really interests me at all. Uh, Braxton Garrett, if he was coming in in better form than maybe somebody the, the last couple of years that I've used um, and we've had success with, but just don't see it happening right now. So, but there we have it. There's that first look at pitching. If you enjoy what I bring to you, please hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, turn the notification bell on, get the alert anytime we drop videos here at DFS Army. If you want to get access to our coaches, tools, sheets, Discord, etc., I'll put links in the description below. You can use promo code RAZ, that's R-A-Z, for 10% off. And as always, best of luck, everybody.